radical reactions will have anti-Markovnikov selectivity. And this is nice because now we have two options. We can perform a Markovnikov addition to an alkene using HBr. And then, since this is going through a carbocation intermediate, the hydrogen will add first. The carbocation will end up on the more substituted carbon, in this case secondary, and then we will have our bromine come in, well, our bromide will come in and coordinate that, at that location. And we will select for 2-bromopropane. This is Markovnikov addition. And we're discussing that as a, as a review so that we can see the contrast. Now, previously we talked about how um, hydroboration oxidation would put an alcohol on the anti-Markovnikov position. But it turns out we can go directly uh, using a bromination to the anti-Markovnikov product. We just need to go through a radical mechanism. So we'll add HBr, but we're going to add some kind of peroxide. This will generate radicals and then we will proceed through a radical mechanism and the selectivity goes in the anti-Markovnikov direction. So now we will generate one bromopropane. Um, one of the possibilities would be to add, for our peroxide, would be this. Um, so here's a peroxide, and there are others. Um, that we could use to make this process happen. Now, it's also possible that you can see anti-Markovnikov addition when you weren't expecting it. And that's simply because solvents can sometimes have peroxide contamination in them. And this is especially uh, a possibility in ethers. So ethers can tend to be contaminated with peroxides because ethers can form peroxides on exposure to oxygen. That has its own problems. Uh, one of the problems for that is that organic peroxides tend to be explosive. And so just as a side note, if you ever see a bottle of ether and it looks kind of old and it's got some crusty material on there, do not touch that bottle. Um, you need a special disposal team at that point. That's also another reason why you would want to label when you receive the bottle and when you first opened the bottle. Um, that could be important, in the, in, especially in ethers. Uh, they also have peroxide test strips that you can use to kind of check if you've formed peroxides. Now that could be useful for safety aspect, but I'm not sure how sensitive they are. And so if you're seeing anti-Markovnikov addition and you didn't want it, you may want to just not use an ether solvent to begin with.
Now, if you do want it, I would suggest purposely adding in a peroxide just to be safe. So initially we will uh, generate our radical from the peroxide. This is just homolysis. Then our peroxide uh, radical can react with our HBr. with our SH2 um, type mechanism, generates a bromine radical, and then the radical can do some addition to our alkene. So let's see if I can draw all of this at once. Bromine's coming in. Now, you'll notice that we will have to put a radical either on the primary carbon or the secondary carbon. Right? If the bromine adds to the primary carbon, the radical will end up on the secondary carbon. That is favorable because secondary radicals are more stable. When we had Markovnikov addition, we went through a carbocation and the bromine was the second thing on. Here, the bromine is the first thing on because it is the attacking species. That is why we switch to anti-Markovnikov addition. So we end up with this, and now this can continue the reaction by um, reacting with another HBr. So the radical comes in. Same kind of story. Forms our product. And of course, continues the radical propagation. And uh, naturally, we can draw another one of those little cycles for this. So we have a little bit more on the initiation stage. So this is that first couple steps here to generate that bromine radical, which of course could end in termination. Hopefully not, before our reaction is done. At this point, we will bring in our uh, propene. And of course, this could exit uh, with termination too. But it could also propagate back here by reacting with HBr. This will kick out our product. and regenerate the bromine as indicated by that last step here. So again, this cycle is really just writing out these reactions in a way that helps us see which steps will lead to termination or which are the possible ways that termination could occur and what are the ways that this gets propagated. So that is anti-Markovnikov addition. And so now we have one more tool in our synthetic um, tool box and we can get at reactions a little bit more efficiently or products a little bit more efficiently. 
having the ability to add both in the Markovnikov and now in the anti-Markovnikov fashion.